Good afternoon, this is Mr. McGee in IB Biology, and right now I'm going to show you part two, how to make a graph based on the table that we have just made in part one. Now, if you recall, we took our data. I made a mock lab where I took the volume of music. I was playing music to my corn plants. Yes, I thought that was a pretty cool idea. And I was going to play the music to my corn plants. I had five trials at each sound level, and I weighed them initially, and I weighed them with the final mass. But what we care about, really, is the change in mass. Before I continue, we had a little boo-boo at the end of our lab with making the table, and I just noticed this after recording the last one. These should be separated because this is processed data. To separate it, I'm going to just go here to the mean, and I'm going to put a box around it. And I could put a box here, but it's already there, so there. But I also noticed I had these little lines on standard deviation. And to get rid of those, I'm just going to highlight that. And I'm going to go here to no border. And as you can see, we got rid of the lines. But then I want to put my borders back. So I'm just going to highlight each cell. And then I'm going to hold Control. And that will let me highlight each area individually. And I'm going to go back here and put the border back. So. It's really just a matter of playing around with that, and you can put your borders pretty much wherever you want them to be. All right, having said that, let's go ahead and move on. We're going to go ahead and make a graph, and if you recall in the past, when you would make one, you would always highlight the independent variable. You would then hold Control, and you would highlight the mean of your dependent variable. And in previous labs, you would recall, we come up here to Insert, and we would introduce a scatter plot. But there's a problem with this for a couple of reasons in this particular lab. Number one is the mean is a lot of data that we don't need. We only actually need the change, the average or the mean change of our corn seeds for each sound level. We only need those. So that's one issue. We can't highlight this just blindly like we did in previous labs. The other problem is if you watch what's going to happen, whoops. Let's say we highlight that and hold control, and then we just click on these here. We can do that, but watch what happens when I go to create a scatter plot. And by the way, remember, don't ever create a scatter plot with the lines already pre-drawn in it. You want to just have one with the blank lines. If I go ahead and do that, you'll notice it's creating different series, and we don't want those. We can always fix that, uh, and you can always go up here to go to select data to fix it, but we're going to just kind of do this a little different. So for that reason, we can't make our graph in ways that we have done in the past. We have to kind of go about this a little rogue and a little different than we've done in the past. What I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to highlight our independent, I'm sorry, our dependent variable. I'm just going to click it, then hold control and click on each of our mean for our changes. Without doing anything else, I'm just going to go up here to insert a scatter plot just a blank line one, and in order to see the rest of my data, I'm just going to kind of shrink this. We'll come back to this later, and I'm just going to kind of move it down here so I can see it a little bit. Now remember, you can always zoom in on your graph if you want, or zoom out on your table, just like this, by holding control and moving your mouse cursor. So get it positioned to where you're most comfortable and where you can still get some working room, but I'm going to just leave it here for right now. All right. Now that we've created our graph, what we're going to do is I need to change these numbers because if you can see, I want the volume to be down here as my independent variable. I am okay with these numbers because this is my dependent variable. So to fix this, you go up here to Select Data. And on Office 2010 and 2013, it's slightly different in a different place, I believe. Go up here to Select Data. What you're going to do on this part is we're going to, well, select data. Click here on Edit, and you don't need a series name, or you, you call it whatever you want. It's just basically the trend, but you could leave that blank. Our X values are going to be, well, they're going to be our volume of music. But because I'm using three cells for this, I'm really just going to kind of click on one, and then I'm going to hold Control and just kind of click each cell individually. Do not ask me why Excel doesn't let you highlight this. I have no idea. Excel is just probably practicing witchcraft or something. 
that's all I can do. So highlight X values by doing that. And then for your Y values, just make sure they are highlighted just like that. And so what you see here is we have our independent variable matched with the dependent variable. And if we click on it like this, we should see our horizontal categories are properly in there. I'm going to click on that. And what do you know? We have a graph that is properly scaled. And again, we are, I'm sorry, properly lined up. Again, we are only graphing the mean change. I apologize, they keep interrupting me on these announcements. All right, I'm going to continue to ignore this announcement, and I'm going to show you all how to properly title this. To title this, you can put in it whatever you want to. Make sure it has a descriptive title. So let's say the effect of, you could say the effect of uh, music volume on seed germination. And of course, you want to have your units and uncertainties in there. And again, you can do Alt 0177, or you could just go to Insert Symbol or whatever. Uh, and let's do 0.1 grams there, just like that. Now again, that's just my title. Your mileage may vary, and you can do what you want with that. That's a little too big, and I'm going to want to go here and shrink it just like that. All right. And again, you can do it as you wish. That's just kind of my example there. First thing we need to do is we need to put some titles on these axes. And to do that, I'm just going to go over here. Office 2013 allows us to come and click on axis titles. And then I can do this. But if you remember Office 2010 and 2007, you actually have to go up here to put your axis titles. But right here, I'm just going to do it like this. So for my axis title, I'm going to call this the change, whoops, change in mass. And I'm going to put that plus my, I'm going to hit Alt 0177. And then I'm going to do my units of measurement just like that. Okay. And since we have that, you know what, now that I think about it, we really don't need our unit on uncertainty up in our title like that. Okay. Sorry, I'm doing this kind of fast and getting frustrated. This is actually the fourth video I made because I keep getting interruptions. The, it is now 2.30, 2.40, so uh, a lot of things are happening after school. Okay, so we have our change in mass. And we have our axis title. What we're going to do here is we're going to name this axis title... Um, volume of music and of course alt 0177 and we're going to call it decibels. I didn't know about the alt key I just learned that recently so that's kind of a cool trick. Anyways uh, now that we did that I want to kind of adjust a few things here look at our scale and check it out and see if it's properly scaled. I would say this fits the graph pretty well although I think we could probably start the graph maybe a little bit lower at 10 I'm just going to click on it and right-click Format Access. And, you know, looking at it, I think I'm okay with it going to zero, even though it would be nice to kind of fill it out a little better here. I think this is okay for right now. But make sure that that row, everything is set to how you want it. I'm going to go here to Number. And this is actually on Office 2010 in a different part. Go here to number, and I'm going to change the number of decimal places to only one because I don't need two decimal places there. I'm just going to change that to one decimal place, and I'm going to do that. And what do you know? It got it down to one decimal point. Okay, looks like I don't need to change decimal points, but I do need to scale this axis. So I'm going to click on it, format axis, and I'm going to go over here and change it to not zero, but I want to start at 40. I'm going to end it at 80. That'll really nicely fill out my graph. Now, I could have this skip 45, etc., but I really don't need to do that because I don't have a whole lot of data. So let's just skip it by every 10 decibels, and that should be it. I could come here to number and change those, but I don't really need to do that. So other than that, it's scaled properly. Let's go over here and get rid of our grid lines because those are just stupid right now. And there we go. We have a graph set up just like that. Now what we need to do is we need to go in here and add a tread line and our error bars. But before I do that, let's change these data points to something a little bit more precise. I'm going to click on a data point. 
I'm going to right click over it and click on Format Data Series. This is the same on all versions of Excel that I am aware of. But on 2013, you got to kind of search around here for Series option. And I believe it's under uh, Marker right here. Okay. I right clicked on the dot, and now I'm on the Paint thing, and I'm on Marker. And this is Office 2013. And I'm going to go here to Marker Options. I like the circle, but you know what I don't like is I like it to be a little smaller because it is a little data point. Let's put it at 3. And let's put it at solid fill, and I don't like it blue. Let's make it nice and black. Okay. And a border, let's go ahead and put a solid, but let's give it a solid black too. Or you could just hit no border, I guess, and it would blend in. There. Now my data points are nice and crisp and smaller. You can change this depending on your preferences. That's just something I like to do. Let's go ahead and add our tread line and our error bars, but really quick, I'll center that. And let's go add our error bars first. To do that, I'm just going to shrink this, and I'm going to move it down here so I can work a little better. I need to have access to my standard deviation. To do this, you're going to want to go here to your error bars, and you want to click on More Error Bar Options. Remember, all of this was up here in Office 2010 and below. So under More Error Bar Options, I'm just going to go to Custom before doing anything else, and unfortunately, my standard deviation needs to be in view here, so make sure you scale things so you can see it. For error bars, I need to put my positive error bar values. I'm going to click on it, and instead of highlighting everything like we have done in the past, once again, I have to select only the change. I'm going to click on this and hold Control, clicking on only the standard deviation for our change. And I'm going to do the same thing for our negative error bars, clicking on, whoops, Sometimes if you screw up, you have to erase it because Excel is really picky. Like I said, I think this is a program made by witchcraft or something. It's pretty picky. It does things that don't make sense scientifically, I can say that. All right. And what do you know? I have my error bars. Every once in a while, these horizontal error bars pop up. You just click on them, and then you hit delete. I have absolutely no idea why those horizontal bars are on there. Again, I think it is... I, I honestly don't know. I've looked on Microsoft's explanations for it, and they just tell you to delete it. They don't tell you why they're there or how they pop up. So now that I have my error bars, I see we have another problem that just popped up. It looks like it auto-scaled my y-axis a little bit, but that's not a big deal. That's something we can easily fix. Let's go here and click on this. Right-click to format access, and I'm just going to rescale it to how I want it. Uh, I noticed that my error bar went below zero, which means we had quite a bit of variation on this one. And this one went up pretty high. It looks like maybe above two. So you know what? For all practical purposes, normally we would change this to make it fit. and We can enter zero or that if it auto-scaled it. But looking at this now, I think this is probably going to be acceptable. I, I can't change this to zero because that would knock off this error bar. And I can't get rid of that 0.4. Well, let's give it a try. Let's go to 1.2 and click on something else and see what that does. Oops. I'm working fast here. I'm not even thinking. Enter 1.2 and see what that does. Oh, I guess it works. Yeah, let's just do that. All right, so all I did was scale it to 1.2 instead. All right, now that we have our error bars, and again, you saw I did that by... Highlighting the standard deviation, but only by holding control and clicking on the ones for change. I'm now going to make my tread line by clicking here on tread line options. And as you can see, I have a variety of options. I could leave it uh, linear, but it's best to make the graph what best fits your data. Now, personally, I like polynomial because it tends to fit curved lines a little better. You will have to move this order to how you think it fits your data best. I think it fits the data best with a curve that is set to a polynomial order of probably probably around three or so. Let's go ahead and leave it right there. And to show that you've processed more in IB, it's really nice to have an equation and an R square calculated. This is stuff that you can use when you write your conclusions. It's always nice to put this in a nice little spot off to the side I like to have it in the lower bottom corner, but you can change it. 
Just make sure it fits and it's not obnoxious and something like that. Okay, and with that said, my graph is done. I have units and uncertainties and titles on both my y and x axis. It is properly scaled on both axes. I have error bars. I have a tread line. The only thing I could probably fix is this tread line itself. Let's right click on it, format the tread line because it's ugly. Go up here to this paint effect and let's go to solid line and uh, I can make it thicker but I don't want to do that. I like just a nice little thin line and you know it's up to you. You can add the dash lines and all that stuff. I guess I'm not sure where I can or straight line right there just like that. You can do stuff like that if you so wish. I'm just going to kind of leave it like that. And there you go. That is a nice little uh, tread line to illustrate your graph. Now to copy it, you just, whoops, you click somewhere on your graph and you just copy it. Whatever you do, don't click in the middle of the graph because it only will copy the picture. You want somewhere on the edge when you copy this. And then you go to your word processor just like we did earlier. And you're going to want to kind of go somewhere down here. And again, when you paste it, I highly recommend you use the picture option because it won't distort your graph when you try to resize it like that. Okay? Now what I would do is go up to here to Format, Wrap Text, and go in front of text just like that. And now I can move this wherever I want to. And this little anchor option I've never seen. I'm assuming it anchors it down or something. I've never actually seen that. And then, of course, just like in the table, we have a title. Let's go ahead and put a title on our graph here. And I'll probably change that to non-italics in a minute. Graph. Now, I put my title up here, but uh, it really just depends on how you set it up. I already have my table, my table here for the graph, so it's really up to you on how you want to do this. I do want to get rid of this italics, I will say that. Let me see if I can, whoops, just get rid of it like that. There we go. Now, it is up to you to write things between here, write things before and after, but if I zoom out, this is a fully processed table and graph, and we should be all set with this. So the question is, can we do anything more? Well, we could do a t-test really quick, and I'll show you how to do that. I'm just going to move this down to the side. To do a t-test, you simply click somewhere you want the t-test to calculate. I just want it here on the K. Go here to Functions. Click on t-test. And again, you need to go to All or Statistical. I just happen to use it a lot. And to do a t-test, we need different sets of data. And what you're going to use for this is all the, or the rows of data that you are getting your values from. So I'm going to pick my control sample, 40 decibels, and I'm going to highlight all the data for the change. My array 2 is going to be the extreme variation, and in case that would be our, this case it would be our last one. So for array 1, I highlighted the uh, change for the control, and now for array 2, I'm going to highlight the change for the extreme, our last category. I'm going to enter 2 and 3 for our tails and type, and I'm going to click here. And again, we want sig figs in this case. So if you look here, we've got two sig figs. I'm going to want to keep sig figs with the same number of sig figs as my other one, plus one sig fig. Therefore, 0 .00237 is my final answer. This is my t-test. This is below 0 0.05. Therefore, you could write in your conclusion, the difference in the mean here and the difference in the mean here is significant. And therefore, our experiment showed a change. You could do a t-test between the control and the next one if you wanted to, or the control and the next one. It's up to you. A t-test is just another way of processing your data, and all of it helps you write a conclusion, and all of it helps show that you are a scientist using data and statistics to come up with your reason. We are not practicing witchcraft. We are not practicing voodoo or any type of mystic, uh, well, mystic uh, blah, blah. We are using numbers to draw our conclusion, and that is the scientific method. Let me know if you have questions. Look forward to seeing your results. Take care.